Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna be learning how to create an authentication system for our Django application so that users can log in, log out, and we'll also set it up so that users need to be logged in in order to access certain pages. So let's go ahead and get started. So in the last video, we saw how to create this registration page where users could create new accounts, but they're not able to log in using those accounts yet. So the admin page that we've seen in previous videos is only for users with admin access, but by default, our new users aren't gonna have that. So we need to have a login page for them on the front end. And Django has a lot of this functionality taken care of for us on the back end already. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get started by using their default login views. So first of all, I'm going to import these login and logout views within our projects URLs module. So within our project, let's go open up our projects main URLs module. And this is where we have our admin and register route and also our default route that goes to our blog URLs. So within this URLs module, I'm going to import some views. Now, these are views that Django provides for us for logins and logout. Uh, so to import these, we can come up here uh, and say from Django.contrib.auth, and we want to import those views, and we want to import those as auth underscore views. Now, I mentioned this in one of the previous videos, but anytime you import views, we're importing multiple views here into these uh, URLs. So you always want to say as and then call it something else. So when we imported views from users, we called those user views. When we import them from auth, we call them auth views. That way, uh, those names don't collide. Okay, so once we have that imported, then we can create paths for those views. So I'm going to copy our register path here as a starting point and paste this in. And actually, let me just do one of these at a time. So let me remove that. Okay, so now let's create a login view. So I'm going to create a login view here. So the path will just be to login. And now we're going to use these auth views that we got uh, from Django. And this is going to be auth views dot login view. And look at the casing there that is a camel case with that capitalized. And now we want to say dot as underscore view. And then for the name here, we will set this name equal to login. So now I'm going to copy this and do the same thing for a log out view. And I'll explain this more in just a second after we get these in here. So I'll call that log out. The view is going to be log out view as view. And then the name will be log out. So this login and log out view here, these are class-based views. Now we haven't seen class-based views yet, but we'll make some of our own later in the series. So the built-in views for login and logout that Django gave us will handle the forms and the logic and all of that stuff for us, but it's not gonna handle the templates, which is good because we want to make the templates anyways. We want them to match the look and style of our current website. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if we run our dev server and then go to our website, so our dev server is still running, Oh, and it looks like we have an error. I misspelled Django on one of these imports. So fix that, save it, see if our server is now running. It is. Okay, so now let's go to that login route that we just created. Then we can see that when we go to that route, we get this template does not exist error. And these Django errors are extremely useful when we're in debug mode because they can point us in the direction of what changes we need to make in order to get things working. So the error that is showing us here is that it's looking for a template. And you can see here, this is a little small, but it says that it's looking for the template at registration forward slash login.html. So that's where that Django login view looks for that template by default. Now we could create a registration directory inside of our templates and create a login.html template there, but I think it would make more sense just to have our login template inside of our user templates alongside our register page that we've already created. And we can tell Django that we would just like to look there instead. So let's do that. Okay, so to do this, I'm gonna open back up our URLs here. And at the end, we can tell Django where to look for a template. And we're actually gonna pass this in as an argument to the as view function. So within here, within this as view function, I'm gonna say template underscore name is equal to, and then a string. I'm gonna say that this is in users forward slash login.html. Now we haven't created this yet, but we will in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and do the same thing with logout. So I'll say template name is equal to, and then we'll change this to 
logout.html. So now if we save that, if we go back to our browser and reload this, then we should still get an error. But now it's telling us that it's looking for this template in users forward slash login.html. So let's create that login template inside of our users templates. Uh, so let's open up our users app and navigate to those templates. And within our users templates, let's create a new template here and I'll call this login.html. And that's in the same location that our current register template is located as well. And within this login.html template, we're going to make this very similar to our other routes where we're extending the base template. And we also need to display the form that the login view will be passing to this template. Now, this will be very similar to the register template that we created in the last video. So I'm just going to use that as a starting point. So I'll open that up and copy it and then paste it into our login template. So I copied the register template there and paste that in to the login template. So in this template, we're simply creating our form and our form has a field set and a legend. And then the, we are displaying the form with those crispy form tags that like we saw in the last video. And also we have a submit button down here that says sign up. So we're actually gonna wanna change some of this stuff around. So we're gonna want to change the legend. This is now the login page. So we'll change the legend to say uh, log in and we will change the submit button to say log in. And also we see a link down here at the bottom that we had on our register page that says, you know, do you already have an account? Well, if you do, then you can sign in here. Um, so just like we did on that register page, you also see a lot of websites where they'll have a link on the login page that says, do you need an account before you log in? And if you need an account, then you can sign up here. So instead of asking the user if they already have an account and to log in, we will say need an account and then we will send them to the register page. So sign up now. Now currently this link here is dead because for our register page, we didn't put an actual link to our login page because our login page didn't exist yet, but it exists now. So we can actually fill in these hrefs uh, so that these links are active. So let's fill this in with URLs to our register and login pages. So I'm currently in the login page and we'll link to the register page if they need an account. Uh, and we saw how to do this in the templates video, but if you forgot, we can simply open a code block here in the href and just use this URL tag. And then uh, we want this to be a URL for the register route. And within the register page, we want to link to the login route. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to our register template. And now that our login page is going to exist, we can fill in that href and say that we want this to be the URL for login and save that. So now let's go back to our login page. Okay, so now we have our login template done, but even with this done, this probably still isn't going to work in the browser. So let me save everything and then reload this in the browser. Okay, so we can see that we're at least getting a login page here. Now this login page should be somewhat functional right now. So if I enter a username and a password that doesn't match any users in our system, then it should be invalid. So if I just say bad username and then some gibberish password, and then try to log in, then it says, please enter a correct username and password. So we can see that we do have some functionality here. So that's good. Now I say that it's only somewhat functional because if we try to log in with a correct username and password, then we're going to see another error. So let me do that. So I'm trying, going to try to log in with that Corey MS user that I created in uh, the earlier videos. And if I log in with that, then we can see that we get a 404 error, which means that it's looking for a route that doesn't exist. Now, this isn't just a template that doesn't exist, but it's trying to access a URL that doesn't have a view attached to it. Um, and the URL that it's trying to access is this forward slash accounts forward slash profile. Now we're going to add a profile route, route to our site soon, uh, but right now we don't have one. And even if we did, I don't think I want our blog to redirect users to their user page uh, when exactly when they log in. I think it would be better if they got redirected to the home page when they logged in. So the reason that this is trying to direct us to the accounts profile page is because Django set it up so that when the login is successful, it tries to navigate to that location, but we can modify that location using our settings. So I'm going to open up our project settings. So let's go to our project and open up the settings.py file. And let's just go all the way to the very bottom here to create a new setting. So here at the very bottom, I'm just going to create 
a new setting that is login underscore redirect. Oh, let me spell that right. Redirect underscore URL. And we'll set that equal to blog dash home. And that is the name of the path that we gave to our blog homepage. So now with that in place, if we go back to our browser and try to log in using a uh, correct username and password. So I'll go to the login page and log in with a username and password that is in our database. Then we can see that now we get redirected to our blog homepage. So that worked. Now this is actually logging in our user into our website. So there isn't much visual feedback right now that tells us that we're logged in, but we'll fix that in just a second. But we can tell that we're currently logged in because I logged in with the account that has access to the site's administration page. So if I go to forward slash admin, then we can see that we're already logged in. So now let's try to log out and then log back in. So now if I log out and go to this admin page, then it's asking us for a login. So we can't access this page until we log in again. So let me go back to the login page that we just created. I will log in with those credentials and then go back to our admin page and I'm logged in again. So that login page that we've created is working, even though it's not giving us much visual feedback uh, at the moment. So now that we have our login page working, let's change our register route so that users are redirected to the login page after they log in. Now, currently, if we look at our register views, so let me pull up our user views here. Then we can see here that after they have uh, successfully registered the user, uh, that we are giving them this success message and then redirecting them back to the home page. But it would make a lot more sense right here to redirect them to the login page uh, now that we have this working so that they can log in with their new account and make sure that their account is working. So let's go ahead and change this. So for the message, I'm just going to get rid of our current message and say your account has been created, you are now able to log in. And now instead of redirecting them to the blog homepage, let's direct them to the login page. So I'll save that. Okay, and before we view this back in our browser, uh, let's quickly get our logout page working as well. So let me pull up our projects URLs module here real quick. So pull up our projects URLs where we added the login and logout routes. Now for our logout view, I also set a template name of users and logout.html. But actually, let's remove that just for a second so that I can show you what it looks like without that set. So let's just look at the default logout view. So now let's open our browser and try to navigate to our logout route. So I'll go back to our homepage here and we are currently logged in. So I will go to forward slash logout. So this is kind of weird. So we can see that it says that we were uh, logged out, but it looks like the Django admin page. So it says that we are logged out and then it gives us a link to log back in. And if we click on that login again, then it takes us back to the admin login. Now that's not what we want since we want an authentication system that works for everyone on the front end of the website and doesn't expose them to our admin section. So all we need to do here is create a logout template in our users templates directory where we just created our login template and then tell our logout view to use that template just like we did with login. Um, so first, let's tell the logout view that we wanna use a different template just like we had set up before. So I will paste that back in. And so that will look for a logout template at users logout.html. So in our users templates directory, right alongside our login and register templates, let's create a new file and we'll call this logout.html. And now let's copy one of our other templates so that we have a starting point here. So I'm gonna copy the register.html template and let's paste this into our logout template. And now we're not gonna have any forms on this page. So we can get rid of this loading crispy form tags here. And we can also get rid of our entire form here. And actually I'm just gonna remove everything inside of our content block here, uh, except for this bottom div here that has our login link. So I'm gonna keep that, but I'm gonna get rid of this content section uh, div. So I will fix this uh, tab tabbing here. And now above our link, I'm just gonna simply put an H2 tag that says that we've been logged out. So I'll put an H2 tag and then just say, you have been 
logged out. And then I'll just change our link text here for the login page and just say login again. So I'll remove the text that says already have an account and then just make the uh, login text here log in again. So with this in place, let's try to log in and log out of our website within the browser. So let's pull up the browser here and go back to our homepage. And now let's go to forge slash login and let's log in with a user that exists on our site. And now that we're logged in, let's try to log out. So now let's go to forge slash log out. And we can see that we have a message here that says you have been logged out, log in again. And really small change here, it doesn't matter, but I can tell that this has a little margin here to the left. And that's because I left a class on there. So you can see that our anchor tag here has a class of ML-2. Let's just get rid of that because we no longer have any text to the left. So save that and, whoops, save that and reload that logout page in our browser. And now that's pushed against the left side there. Okay, so we can see that now our site is using our logout page that we created in our templates instead of that default that had kind of the admin style. Uh, so now it looks like the rest of our website, so that's good. And if we go to the admin page, then that logout functionality should have still worked. So it should tell me I need to log in, and it does, so that's good. Okay, so now let's just go back to our homepage. Okay, so now that we have our registration page and our logins and logouts working, let's change our navigation bar so that it changes based on whether someone is logged in or logged out. Because if someone isn't logged in yet, then they should have a login link available somewhere on the page. But if they're logged in, then they should see a logout uh, link instead of a login link. So to do this, we can open up our base template that contains the navigation and then put in a conditional that checks whether the user is logged in or logged out. So I will go down and open up our project here. And within our project, our base template is within our blog app. And that is in our blog templates and then blog subdirectory. And then I'll open up the base template here. Now I'm gonna scroll down until I see the navigation. So the navigation is here, from this opening nav tag to this closing nav tag. Okay, so first of all, here are our login and register routes right now. Now currently, our navigation links to the register and login pages don't actually go anywhere. They're just these dead links. And that's because those pages didn't exist when we created this base template. And trying to use the URL uh, tag for a route that doesn't exist will throw an error. So now we can actually fill these in. So I will put in a code block for each of these, and we will say that we want this one to be the URL for the login. And then we can copy that and paste this in and say that we want this one to be the URL for the register route. Okay, so now we only wanna see the login and register links if the user isn't logged in, because if they are logged in, then we know that they don't need to log in or create an account. And Django makes this easy for us by providing us with a user variable that contains the current user. And it has an attribute called is authenticated that allows us to check if the user is currently logged in or not. So here in our navigation bar, we can just put in a conditional. So right here is where our current login and register routes are located. So I'm gonna put that conditional right here. So I'm gonna open up a code block and I'm gonna say if user dot is underscore authenticated, then if they are authenticated, then it means that they are currently logged in and we will want to display the logout route, which we don't have uh, in our navigation yet, but we'll add it in just a second. So now we'll put in an else statement here and say else, which means that they wouldn't be authenticated, which means that they would be logged out. And if they are not authenticated, then we want to display the login and register routes here. So we'll put that inside the else block. And now we can simply end that if conditional by saying end if down here at the bottom. And now all we need is a link for our logout route. So I will copy the login route here and paste that and change this to be logout and change the route for that to be logout. So one more time, let's go through this. We're saying if the user is authenticated, then put a link to the logout page in the navigation. Uh, else, if, which means if they are not authenticated and means that they're logged out, 
then show links for the login page and a link for the register page in the navigation. So now let's go to our website and try logging in and then see how this affects our navigation bar. So all of this is saved. So let's go back to our website and reload this. So now let's see if our login link works up here. So we can click on that and it takes us to our login page. So now if we log in, now if we look up here in the navigation, now it's showing us a link to the logout route. And that is because our user is authenticated. So it shows that link instead of the other two. And now if we click on logout, now we've successfully logged out and now we can see the login and register routes up here in the navigation instead. So it's always a good idea to give your users some visual feedback like that, letting them know whether they're logged in or logged out. Because if they're logged in and they see a login register route at the top, then it's going to kind of confuse them and make them think that they're not currently logged in. So this is a good way to do it. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to be learning in this video is how to put a restriction on certain routes so that you can only go to those routes if you are currently logged in. Now you'll see this on certain sites all the time. So say that I click on a link to edit my Twitter profile or something like that. Now if I'm not logged in, then it'll first take me to the login page and say, hey, you have to log in first before you can view this page, which is definitely a good thing because you just don't want anybody to be able to, you know, go in and edit our profiles. So let's do something like that on our site. So we'll create a route for the user's profile that they can access after they've logged in. So first, let's create this route to their profile. So I will open up our user routes. So let's open back up our project. Let me close down some of the uh, tabs that I have here since we've got a lot built up. Just get this cleaned up a bit. Okay, so we want to create a page for a user's profile. So first, let's create that view. So that is going to be within our users views. So I'm going to open up our users app directory here and then open up our views.py from within there. Currently we just have our register view. So we can just add this below our register view. So down here at the bottom I'll say def and I'll call this profile and remember that we have to uh, accept the request. And right now we'll keep this extremely simple and just render a template uh, that we haven't created yet. So we will just say return render and we will render out, remember that the uh, first argument has to be the request, and we will render out a template called users forge slash profile.html. And we haven't created this yet, but we will in just a second. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create that template. So within our users templates, let's open these up. So this is right alongside the login, logout, and register templates. We'll create a new template in here called profile.html. And now as usual, let's open up another template to grab as a starting point. So I'm just going to grab the login template here and copy that and paste it into our profile template. And now I'm just going to delete everything here in our content block and simply print out the current user's username. So I will delete all of this and we will just print out the current user's username when they navigate to this page. So we'll just put an H1 block here and then uh, to access that user variable, we can put in the double curly braces and then say user dot username. And remember that user is not something that we actually have to pass in uh, to the context. That is something that is built into Django that represents the current logged in user. Okay, so now that we've got the view and the template created for this profile page, let's create the route in our URL patterns that will use this view. So to do this, we'll just put this inside of our projects urls.py alongside our register login and logout routes. And I'm just going to copy this register route here as a starting point and paste that underneath. And now we can change this to profile. So I'll say when we navigate to forward slash profile, we want that to be handled by the user views uh, profile view. And we will name that profile. Okay, so those changes should make that route accessible on our site. So let's also add a link to this page on the navigation bar if the user is logged in. So I'm going to go back to our blog's base.html template where the navigation bar lives. So that was within blog, templates, and then base.html. Scroll down to our navigation bar again where we were checking if the user is authenticated. And we want to display a link to their profile when they are logged in. So we can display this right above the logout link. So I will copy that 
and paste that in to the is authenticated section of this conditional. And we want this to go to their profile. So we'll say URL profile, and we'll just say profile there. Now, before we restrict this route to only be accessible to users who are logged in, let's first make sure that this is working with all of our changes so far. So let's save all of our files and all these are saved. And now let's open this up in our browser and see how this looks. So I will go to login and log in with a user that exists. And once we're logged in, now we can see we have a profile and a logout link up here. So if I click on profile, then we can see it goes to a page that lists out our logged in users username. So that is working so far, but let me show you what the problem is here. So if I log out, then nothing is preventing me from going back and just manually going to that profile page. So if I go up here into the URL bar and go to forward slash profile, then we can see that we don't get anything on the screen and we don't get anything on the screen because it doesn't have a current user and doesn't know what username to display. So we want to put a check in place that makes a user log in before they can access this page. So let's do that now. And this is extremely easy to do. To do this, we can just use a login required decorator that Django provides for us. So let's go back to our views, our user views. So within our users app, I'm going to open up our views.py. And now we want to require that a user is logged in before they view this profile view here. So to do this, let's import the login required decorator. So up here at the top, we can say from Django dot contrib dot auth dot decorators kind of long, then we can import login underscore required and save that. And now down here uh, by our profile view, we can simply add that decorator above our profile view. So let me copy that. And this is going to be a decorator. So we'll say at uh, login required. Now, if you don't know what decorators are, then it's not a big deal. Basically, it adds functionality to an existing function. And in this case, it adds functionality to our profile view where the user must be logged in to view this page. Now, I do want to mention that if you're using class-based views, then the process of making the view uh, require a login is a little bit different. We haven't covered class-based views yet, but we will in a future video. But for now, we can go back to our browser and try to reload that same profile page. So now if I try to reload this while I'm not logged in, then we can see that we get an error and it's telling us that the page it's looking for doesn't exist. And it's looking for this page at forward slash accounts forward slash login. And that's the default location that Django looks for login routes. But we decided to simply put our login route at forward slash login. So we need to tell Django where it can find our login route. And we can easily do that just by adding a login URL variable to the settings uh, py file in our project. So let's open our projects settings.py file. So within Django project settings.py, we'll just go down here to the bottom. And right at the bottom here, right underneath this login redirect URL, I will set one called login underscore URL, set this equal to login. And login is the name that we gave to our URL pattern for the login route. So now if we go back to our browser and try to access our profile page, then you can see that now we're redirected to our login route. Now there's one really nice thing that I want to show you here that's built into the Django login view. Now, if you look at the URL, then we were trying to access the profile page and it redirected us and told us that we had to log in first. But if we look at the URL, then we can see that there is a parameter in our URL that says next is equal to forward slash profile. So it's keeping track of the page that we were trying to access and it will direct us to that page after the login. And that's a feature that most people expect on web apps these days, because remember our default redirect URL after we log in is the home page of the blog. So imagine how annoying it would be if you clicked on a page and it told you that you needed to log in. And after you logged in, it sent you somewhere completely different. So this is a nice feature built in with the login view. So if I log in here, then we should be redirected to that profile page since that is the page that we were trying to access. So let me log in here. So I'll log in with a user that I know exists. 
And we can see that after we successfully logged in, it sent us to the profile page. So that will take us to the page specified in the next parameter if that parameter is in the URL. But if it's not in the URL, then it just redirects us back to the blog homepage like we've seen before. So now this profile page that we have here, this is a route that is only accessible by people who have logged in. And if they haven't logged in, then it'll redirect them to the login page and force them to log in first. So this is working real nice. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. I hope that now you have a pretty good idea for how you can implement an authorization system in Django. So we learned how to get the login and logout pages working, and also learned how we could require a login in order to reach a certain route. Now in the next video, we'll update this user profile page and make it so that our users can upload an image for their profile picture. But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.